What's up, everyone? It's Gruhamid here from Loudwire, sitting next to the What's one your name on... again? Gruhamid. Gruhamid? What kind of fucking name is Gruhamid? My friend Did gave you me grow that... a Hamid out of your ass or something? Oh, my friend gave me that name when I was in Your friend. Grade. Your faggot friend, you mean. Your fucking gay lover. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, that's why you broke up with him, didn't you? Because he didn't suck your dick good enough. There's a new How album. bad is this going to be censored? <laughs> Not censored at all. Not at all. I promise. So I can say whatever the fuck I want. Yes. Let me tell you, they've been working me like a fucking pack animal today. I'm the goddamn master of the motherfucking universe. Odor is fucking your rungus. And they've been shuttling me around from place to place, making me do all kinds of stupid shit. So I hope you've got some goddamn good questions to ask me, or I might just have to... There's really nothing I could do. I'm stuck here. Let's go for it. Let's talk about music. Let's talk about music. All right. Uh, the new album, Battle Maximus. Uh, oh! That is our new album, and it is full of music. Absolutely. And it's the first one to feature Pustulus. Indeed. And, of course, we miss Flatus very much. We do. Um, but how has Pustulus's influence uh, benefited Guar? Well, he's an ordinary bastard. He's uh, full of piss and vinegar, and uh, he, he kind of brought a new style to the band. Um, you know, Flat is very technically uh, skilled, very, very smooth. Um, he kind of led Guar out of the, I don't know, I, I don't know what kind of music we were making for a while there. I, I mean, I think we thought we were the Beatles or Frank Zappa or something. <laughs> we're obviously not. Um, you know, but there was a, maybe even the word "silly" was being applied to us, and you know, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not gonna say a lot of people are like, "Oh, Guar hates a lot of those albums from the middle years of their career." I don't hate those albums. Everything I do is fucking perfect. Everything I did, all those silly albums were just a setup so Flatus could lead us back into the metal pantheon, and of course, he did it with an incredible amount of skill and dexterity. But when he left us, he left a big hole in our songwriting process. But we didn't just, didn't want to like try to replace his sound. We didn't want to like try to replace his style. We just wanted to get another kick-ass guitar player in there and and just let the band mature organically and see what the fuck happened. And Pustulus, after winning the Battle Maximus, um, he against all the other Maximus members who all just happen to play guitar. Um, you know, back in the Scum Dog Legions, the, the flat, the Maximuses would be the ones with the ukulele sitting around the campfire, you know, playing the songs. But anyway, so, uh, yeah, he just kind of came in and, and with his really ornery, really shitty, really obnoxious, um, erasable, or, 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 I mean, I'm still working on human vocabulary, but, uh, he's just a dick. And uh, he really has an abrasive guitar sound. He, he he can play just as technically as well as Flattis, but he's kind of got a just a real gritty, nasty sound to his to his style. And uh, it just kind of propelled us into a, a new direction. I don't think Battle Maximus really sounds like any other Guar album. Then again, I don't think any other Guar album really sounds like any other Guar album anyway. Yeah, and it's m even more impressive because Postulus is deaf. Yeah, yeah, he feels the music through his zits. <laughs> He does have a very bad acting problem, and uh, I've heard that one of the only things that will soothe that is spoiled elephant semen. Yeah, it's got to be spoiled elephant semen. But the problem is, it just you can't you can't just like jack off an elephant and leave it in a bucket. It actually has to be spoiled, but still inside the elephant's balls. So like the elephant has to be dead basically, but still you have to be able to jack it off. I mean, it's not it's not an easy thing to achieve. African elephant or Asian elephant? Doesn't matter. African, European, swallow, I don't know, Monty <laughs> Python, something like that. All right. Have you been able to find any for him? Find a what? To find any elephant semen for him? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, actually, um, a lot of elephants got in touch with us, and they were like, you know, we we want to kill ourselves and, and do whatever we t it takes. Elephants are very intelligent. They would be running this planet if it wasn't for Gua having sex with apes. I often think that we should have had sex with elephants. And we could have created uh, uh, maybe a creature that I wasn't so fucking ashamed of. Like you humans. <laughs> Hate you guys. And in Battle Maximus, you let your turtle friend, Bone Snapper, actually He sing. is not a turtle! Even though he looks like one, very much so like a turtle. He says he's a troll, 
But yeah, you're right. He does look like a turtle. And yeah, we let him sing a song, even though I've read several reviews where they think that I'm singing that song. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. how stupid they are. That's how <laughs> ignorant they are of our musical genius. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. How did he finagle his way into that? I know you're not too fond of him. Well, you know, he just did a kick-ass job in the studio. And honestly, I like to give a track or two sometimes to the other guys in the band. It's kind of a way of pretending that I respect them. You know, uh, uh, give them a track on the album. And, and shut the fuck get up. Uh, get, get the fuck out of my face. You got a track on the album. Just, just shut the fuck up. All right. Um, how does it feel to be the leader of Beavis and Butthead's favorite band? Well, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people remember Beavis and Butthead anymore. Do they really? They had some new episodes a little bit. Well, that's why they came back, right. Yeah. It felt good. You know, Gua, we, I think very single-handedly, you know, there was this horrible phase in music. It started with hair rock, you know, bands like Poison and Britney Fox. And, you know, we kind of owe them a little bit of respect because if, if it wasn't for their overuse of hairspray... We never would have dethawed and become, you know, the musical titanic force that we are. So, but after that, music just seemed to get worse and worse, you know, grunge, you know, uh, Pearl Jam, you know, stuff like that, you know. Um, and, and the whole trend seemed to be moving away from rock and roll being a, a splendiferous spectacle, spectacular display of just, you know, giant, brazen, flaming war chariots, you know, decapitating thousands. And, uh, you know, Guar kind of brought that back. And uh, Beavis and Butthead was a big part of that. And then you can see in culture, um, from that point on, it really gets more and more disgusting. You know, it's like, Guar, I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but we kind of like kicked open the door for things like South Park, you know, Beavis and Butthead followed suit in our wake, and uh, that, you know, you can eat maggot candy now and stuff like that. And, you know, and I think a lot of that was due to Guar, just because we are so fucking disgusting, and, and we've never made any bones about it, and we've never tried to be anything except absolutely excretory and awful. The 2013 Guar BQ. Ah! Which I'm sure was great. Lots of really, really good bands on that bill. Um... A lot of bands who actually have their own beer, and now Guar has their own beer. Yes. Uh, Impaled Ale. Well, no, it's not called Impaled Ale anymore. We found uh, out, actually, there was like five or six other bands that had uh, Impaled Ale already. And okay. So then uh, we called it, uh, unbelievably, the marketing geniuses behind Guar decided to call it Guar Beer. And, you know, it was like, okay, that's really a lame name. But it didn't really uh, matter to our drunken fans who drank every last drop of it at the Guarbecue. And uh, every year, Guarbecue gets bigger, better, the lineup gets better, and it's going to be one of the biggest metal fests in North America, I think, here in a few years. Cool. Uh, will we ever have a chance of a Guar Beer wide release, so to speak. Well, you know, you have to sell a lot of that shit. We're still definitely an underground band, um, you know, uh, underground in the fact that, you know, that's kind of our niche in media and also underground in the fact that we live in caves. So, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever have the distributing power to sell the tens of thousands of bar beers that it takes to make you nation of drunks happy. You know, I don't know if we'll ever be Budweiser. I kind of hope we're not. But, um, you know, if it happened, it would be a good thing. Nothing makes me happier than watching you humans get drunk as shit and smash cars into each other. All right. Uh, and, of course, Guar is famous uh, for being one of the most disgusting, despicable, controversial bands, especially in a live setting. But this year we were treated to something very special with the 2013 VMAs and Miley Cyrus. Right. Is there any chance at all that she has surpassed Guar when it comes to just truly disturbing performances? Well, absolutely not. I think anyone who thinks that Miley Cyrus's performance at the VMA was disturbing is just way too old. I mean, all she did was, like, shake her ass around and, like, stick her tongue out a bunch. It's nothing that hasn't been done a thousand times by young artists learning about their sexuality. Now, if it was Jennifer Aniston 
I would be disturbed because she's in her freaking 40s, right? And apparently she just did make a stripper movie. So that is pretty fucking pathetic. But, you know, actually, all, all that did for me was, uh, first of all, I thought that dude behind her in the Beetlejuice costume was a little more, absolutely, yeah. a little more disturbing. And uh, all it did was, to me, like, uh, the, the people who piled on her to, to, to insult and critique and, and criticize her, I just thought they were showing how old they were. Interesting. It was uh, kind of weird that he was wearing prison stripes. Yeah, it was just stupid. You know, if, if honestly that is what upsets people in this world today, then uh, then we need Guam more than ever. I've got one last question. <laughs> yeah. Are there any dead celebrities that you regret not being able to kill while they were still alive? Oh, certainly. Betty Davis, Charlie Chaplin, Abraham Lincoln, Genghis Khan, every pope ever, Teddy Roosevelt... Henry Winkler. Wait a minute. Henry Winkler is not dead. Well, he soon will be. Uh, you know, pretty much anyone who ever died that I didn't get to kill, I'm a little sad about that. And it's almost worth resurrecting them and then bringing about the whole death process again. And we've done that several times. In fact, I really, really want to do that with Abraham Lincoln. But, you know, bringing people back from the dead does take a considerable amount of power. All right. Well... Thank you very much for stopping by today. Can I just blatantly plug some shit? Please. Battle Maximus is out September 17th. It is the most incredibly awesome great Guar album since the last one. Oh, our 13th album on Metal Blade Records. The next chapter in the story of Guar and the debut of our new scumdog brother, Pustulus Maximus. Hail Flatus, hail Guar! Odorous Arungus. <laughs>